reptiles, cold-blooded, scaly vertebrates. Hello, boys and girls. As you can see, Anna Anaconda is our starting place for today's lesson. She is a green anaconda, one of the largest snakes in the world. When she unwinds, she is about as long as six of you stretched head to toe across the room, and she weighs about 500 pounds. That's more than about eight of you put together. Anna Anaconda belongs to a group of animals that shares a lot of the same characteristics as the amphibians you learned about last time. Who knows the name of the group used by taxonomists? To classify snakes? Yes, snakes are reptiles. Reptiles include crocodiles, alligators, lizards, turtles, and tortoises. But right now, I want to focus on one reptile only, Anna. It's no secret that she has a very high opinion of herself. She was quite fond of telling me so, when I visited Peru. She thinks she is rather pretty, and I quite agree. Rainforest with Piranha, Toad, and Anna Anaconda. In spite of her heavy body, Anna is a very good swimmer. Unlike some of her reptilian relatives, she is an aquatic snake, preferring swamps and rivers to the land. Snakes often have a bad reputation. Some snakes are poisonous, releasing poisonous liquid called venom when they bite. Anna's teeth are actually quite small, and she is not venomous, so you need not worry about that. However, some people fear anacondas because they are members of a family of snakes called constrictors. Does anyone know what that means? Constrictors catch and kill their prey by coiling or wrapping around the prey and squeezing them very tightly. Anaconda's jaws open so wide that they can swallow animals whole, fish, caiman, even jaguars and small deer. The anaconda's powerful muscles crush the bones of its prey as it constricts. Once swallowed, the anaconda slowly digests its meal. Uh-oh, some of you look fearful. Don't worry, you're safe. Anacondas don't live where you live in North America. You'll find them far, far away on the continent of South America. That's where I met Anna. Anna was sure to tell me that as far as she knows, there is no documented record of an anaconda ever killing a man, woman, or child. She and all anacondas are nocturnal animals, and they hunt at night, eating frogs, toads, birds, fish, and turtles. She doesn't have to hunt very often, because one animal will satisfy her appetite for a long time. Well, that's a lot of information about Anna's characteristics, the ways by which scientists classify her as belonging to the animal class called reptiles or reptilia. Anna and other reptiles share some common characteristics with amphibians. Many scientists believe reptiles evolved from amphibians. Reptiles are all vertebrates because they all have backbones, and they are all cold-blooded because their internal temperatures change with their surroundings. Most reptiles can adjust their body temperatures by basking in the sun to stay warm, or by hiding under a rock to stay cool. Just like amphibians, reptiles live on land and in water. 
However, these two groups do, of course, have their differences. Amphibians depend upon water to stay alive, much more so than reptiles. Amphibians' thin, wet, slimy skin needs moisture to absorb oxygen from the air, but reptiles' skin is waterproof. Unlike toads and salamanders, Anna and other reptiles do not breathe through their skin, which is hard, dry, and scaly. They use only their lungs to breathe air, which means they are able to withstand very harsh, dry weather, conditions under which amphibians would not be able to survive. Of course, because they have lungs, this also means that reptiles cannot stay underwater very long. Without coming to the surface to breathe, amphibians usually spend part of their lives entirely in water, but this is not true of reptiles as a group. Whereas amphibians begin life with gills, reptiles are born with lungs and are never dependent upon gills for breathing. Remember how different baby tadpoles look from adult toads. This is not the case for reptiles. Baby reptiles usually look a lot like their parents. They do not undergo metamorphosis the way that amphibians do. From top left, going clockwise, gecko, iguana, gecko, chameleon, bottom, komodo dragon. Let's take a look at some of the animals that belong to the animal group classified as reptiles. These include lizards, geckos, iguanas, and chameleons. Unlike snakes, most lizards have four legs. Chameleons have a keen sense of sight and very long tongues. Their brilliant colors, all shades of pink, blue, red. Orange, turquoise, and green help them camouflage when they come face to face with their enemies. Earth's largest living lizard is the Komodo dragon. It can grow to be ten feet long and may weigh as much as one hundred fifty pounds. These giant island carnivores eat animals as large as goats, pigs, and deer. Saltwater crocodiles are the largest reptiles on Earth, some weighing up to one ton. Looking like very large lizards, crocodiles make their homes in tropical climates, and are often seen floating like logs in the water with only their nostrils, eyes, and ears showing. Like Anna, they are nocturnal hunters. Hunting at night, crocodiles have the most powerful bite in the entire animal kingdom and are fierce hunters, living off fish and small mammals. Some live to be more than one hundred years old. Alligators resemble crocodiles, but they are usually less aggressive or boldly forceful, and live in freshwater habitats. Can you tell the difference between an alligator and a crocodile? Alligators usually have a wide, rounded U-shaped snout, and crocodiles tend to have longer, more pointed V-shaped noses. Alligator and crocodile. Reptile scale. Look at all of these reptiles side by side. Chameleons, Komodo dragons, crocodiles, and alligators. What do you notice about their skin? Is it rough or smooth? Does it look thick or thin? Remember when I mentioned that reptiles' skin is waterproof and that it is hard, thick, and scaly. Their type of scaly skin protects them from overheating. And because their skin is waterproof, it keeps water inside their bodies. Because reptiles' skin is very sensitive to 
or easily affected by temperature, it becomes hot or cold very quickly when exposed to sun or shade. Like many amphibians, some reptiles shed their skin. Many lizards and snakes shed their skin several times a year as they grow. Snakes do not eat their shed skin the way amphibians do. Turtles and tortoises are the only reptiles with bony shells as part of their skeletons. Their backbones are actually fused to their shells. These shells may be flat or domed. Turtles have softer shells so that they can swim faster. But land-dwelling tortoises need hard, leathery shells to protect them from predators. Their legs vary in appearance, depending upon where they live as well. Sea turtles have oar-shaped flippers for moving through the water effectively. Many turtles have claws, which help them dig, and pond turtles. Also have webs between their claws to effectively maneuver or move through water. Land tortoises, like the giant Galapagos, have huge column-shaped legs with claws. These claws help them dig into the ground to move across it. Some turtle species live for more than a century. That's a very long time indeed. Body coverings are an important difference between amphibians and reptiles. Another thing that sets the two groups apart is their eggs. Remember the picture that showed strands of thousands of soft eggs that Tabitha Toad laid in the pond. Most reptiles lay far fewer eggs. And they lay their eggs in nests on land. Membranes, soft outer coverings that provide protection and also help to hold in necessary water for eggs to grow, usually coat the inside of reptilian eggs. In most reptile species, the eggs are also covered in leathery, calcified shells. A few snakes and lizards give birth to fully formed live young instead of laying eggs. The garter snake, a snake that is right here in North America, is one of these exceptions to the rule. So is the Solomon Island skink, a lizard whose habitat is near the continent of Australia. Like amphibians, reptiles live all over the world. They prefer hot, low areas like rainforests, prairies, deserts, and oceans. But they can be found everywhere except near the cold South Pole. If you are as fascinated as I am with reptiles and amphibians, you may want to think about becoming a herpetologist. Yes, indeed, herpetologist is the name. Given to a scientist who specializes in herpetology, the study of certain crawling animals, specifically reptiles and amphibians, with more than five thousand six hundred species of lizards alone, that should keep you busy for a lifetime.